August 2019. The Lord Mayor is in the chair. This council meeting will be streamed live and recorded for publishing to the internet. Please note that an audio and visual recording is being taken at this meeting. This means that your presence at and any contribution you make to the meeting may be collected, used, disclosed or published publicly by the council, including transferring outside Australia. The red light to my right indicates that the meeting is being filmed and streamed. Council acknowledges that we're meeting on the traditional country of the Ghana people of the Adelaide Plains and pays respects to elders past and present. We recognise and respect their cultural heritage, beliefs and relationship with the land and acknowledge that they're of continuing importance to the Ghana people living today. We also extend that respect to other Aboriginal language groups and other First Nations who may be with us today. Council acknowledges the vision of Colonel William Light in determining the site for Adelaide and the design of the city with <coughs> six squares and surrounding belt of continuous parklands, which is recognised on the National Heritage List as one of the greatest examples of Australia's planning heritage. Let us pray. Almighty God, we ask your blessing upon the works of the City of Adelaide. Direct and prosper its deliberations to the advancement of your glory and the true welfare of the people of this city. Amen. We will all stand, sorry, we'll all present stand in silence in memory of those who gave their lives in defence of their country at sea, on land and in the air. Thank you, members. Now, members, I'm trying out some new glasses tonight. So if I do some weird things, it's because I'm trying to make sure that you're in focus. <laughs> ah, interesting. <laughs> ah, okay. Maybe not as easy as I thought. Uh, Apologies tonight, we have one apology which is Councillor Knoll. Um, members, I look for confirmation of minutes from the 13th of August. Thank you, Councillor Martin, second Councillor Sims. Members, are there any comments? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members, tonight we have one deputation uh, from Nazar Usmani. Uh, who is going to speak to us about removing traffic congestion and beautification in the city of Adelaide. Um, Mr Osmani, you have five minutes. Sir, Your Honour, actually the fast, and fast traffic is vital for most businesses. So, when I say fast traffic, I don't uh, mean to increase the sp speed limits. I mean to say that we need to remove the hindrances that do not allow the traffic to move at the designated speed. And uh, although there could be many expensive solutions like br br building bridges, overheads and tunnels and underpasses, but here, uh, that's slightly touched in my paper, but here, I am focusing on the administrative solutions that can make the traffic run, uh, run at the designated speed. And so, what is a uh, what is a uh, uh, traffic? What is of traffic frustration? You know, most of the accidents they are not caused by by as assumed that only the drunk drivers they cause it. The frustrated. The tired driver, the sleepy driver, they also cause accidents. And uh, so we need to address those issues. So in the road safety, the, all the emphasis is just on making the traffic slow, 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 as much slow as possible, 25 kilometers per hour. And we need to change this module. We need to make the traffic smart and we need to bring new ideas onto the roads. Now that's also another uh, theory that we say that we have many green belts, we have many parks, we have many recreation places. So 
but roads are roads no your lord in the roads also we can bring new ideas we can uh, make the travel we, we can make the traffic um, interesting we can make it uh, uh, not laborious we can make it uh, um, joy a uh, fun so because i have only 5 minutes so first of all i'll touch on all the the uh, the proposals that i am i am pro presenting here then i can answer your questions first of all the uh, replacing the dedicated uh, corridors for the track vehicles now if you see all the trams and the trains they have a um, barricaded corridor and after that corridor we have green belts and we have service lanes so in any project the the biggest problem is usually the land acquisition and which we already have so my proposal number 1 is that we replace those uh, rail tracks with fast speed motorways highways so uh, and it can easily accommodate six lanes and we can give dedicate two for the public transport as well so uh, the first proposal is that we replace those track uh, vehicle corridors with fast speed uh, highways the second is programming the tram signals uh, you know the tram first of all there is no point of keeping this rigid transport into the city but we are keeping it as a as a heritage okay but then if the tram has to stop on every signal it doesn't make any good sense the tram must get a, a continuous uh, green uh, signal throughout its journey and that's just a matter of programming the signals then the third is that uh, the train transport uh, you know all the carriages in the in the uh, local train railways they are self uh, motorized so instead of having larger trains at at bigger intervals we can have smaller trains at shorter intervals then is uh, the cumbersome and the noisy um, boom gates uh, if the uh, about 20 meters going into the sky so we can have some engineering solution coming to the trans trams again trains trains you know the whole city is is full of overhead cables the cables going on and the trains and then the cables holding those cables so uh, we need to get some engineering solution to it we need to replace those uh, overhead trains overhead uh, um, cables for the trams with some other solution uh, some rechargeable sort of uh, trams if if at all we want to have them in the city then the uh, the the trams at the public transport they should also accept the aftos card uh, rather than just the metro card so it will become more convenient okay i'll, I'll quickly go so instead of uh, uh, mr asmani your your time so if you could just wrap up that would be great okay so and then then the, then the public transport all the buses they terminate into the city and that makes the city looks like like some uh, some depot where all the trucks and tra full of buses so we need to change this module also the buses should only ply on on main roads up and down thank you mr mismani thank you okay. for your deputation right so i have the paper given so it has it is thank, thank you very much thank you Members, uh, item eight. There are no petitions tonight. It takes us to item nine on the agenda. Um, item nine point one is recommendation one is the City of Adelaide submission South Australian Housing Homelessness and Support Strategy. I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Seconded, Councillor Abrahamsade. Councillor Hyde, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Abrahamsade. Yeah, just um, very quickly, Lord Mayor, uh, I know that at uh, the committee meeting uh, there were some discussions around uh, excluding point one, uh, which was a submission from the Grattan Institute. Um, uh, just to put some members' uh, minds at ease, 
the SA Housing Authority has sought submissions from um, uh, people within the sector, people outside of the sector, and the general public. So chances are the Grattan Institute might put that submission in, or chances are that a member of the public might put that submission in. So uh, uh, I hope that information puts some, uh, some members' minds at ease. Thank you. Members, thanks to Councillor Martin. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Look, um, uh, the councillor hasn't put my mind at rest. The, uh, the Grattan Institute submission was a submission, but it raised significant areas that would have potentially benefited the city. And if they're not going to be considered by the task force, then that means that there is a loss to our, our city and our business ratepayers. The, uh, the submission, the original one before the Team Adelaide Amendment, was ensuring that there would be a statement about the reform of property taxes to improve housing affordability, improving tenancy laws to make rental housing more attractive so landlords in our city would have more tenants, further stamp duty concessions and other incentives to first home buyers, which would bring more young people into the city, financial incentives to encourage seniors to downsize. Now there's an idea. They could perhaps move to the city. And then enforcing foreign investment rules in residential real estate. These are federal and state rules, uh, which some argue is a problem for young people uh, seeking houses, uh, not only throughout uh, the city of Adelaide in South Australia, um, but all over Australia. Now, these are, are really positive measures that it would have been good for the task force to consider, but uh, political, political ideology got in the way. And as a consequence, this council isn't suggesting those things which it should be suggesting. But I, I do uh, agree with one part, one part of that amendment, and that was the uh, uh, the council hide proposal to do away with any reference to consideration of land tax on owner-occupied houses. That's sensible, but the rest just makes no sense at all. Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Uh, summing up, I just want to thank the administration for the phenomenal work um, that was put into this submission. I think this is a, a landmark um, reform that is being uh, undertaken by the state government. I think there are real opportunities for us in the city of Adelaide um, uh, to see the full the full spectrum um, of housing addressed uh, through this through this strategy that's being developed, which is of course um, those uh, who are homeless all the way to those uh, including and then social housing and then affordable housing as well. There's a whole um, a suite of policy reform that will go into helping those people. So uh, I thank the administration I commend this uh, recommendation. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, that takes us to recommendation two, which is the BMX Precinct City Dirt Master Plan. And I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Donovan, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Ho. Councillor Donovan, did you wish to speak? Councillor Ho, members? If not, Councillor Donovan to sum up. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, I'll just check, Councillor Martin, you were four. That was a four. Oh, absolutely, I Excellent. That's just a little, little bit. I'm not quite sure where that hand was. Um, so we have recommendation three before you, which is the Public Art Action Plan 2019-2022. And I look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. Seconded to Councillor Sims. Councillor uh, Kouros, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Sims? Members? If not, back to the mover. Councillor Kouros, to sum up. Uh, members, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, we have in front of you recommendation number four, which is Splash Adelaide 2.0. I have a mover, Councillor Kouros, and a seconder, Councillor Abrahamsadeh. Councillor Kouros, did you wish to speak to it? Councillor Abrahamsadeh? Members? If not, back to the mover to sum up. Those in, uh, members to the vote, those in favour? Those against, that is carried. Uh, recommendation number five was the Strategic Plan Progress Report, quarter four, 2018-2019. Uh, members, I look for a mover. Uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor, and a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak to it? it Councillor Sims. Present my plan. Members? No, if not, back to the mover. Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, members to the vote. Those in favour? Those against, that is carried. 
Uh, members, item 9.2 on the agenda is the advice uh, of the Adelaide Parklands Authority, uh, advice number one, which is a Superloop Adelaide 500 2020 declara declaration and consultation. And I will look for a mover. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and a seconder. Deputy Lord Mayor, De uh, Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak to it? Um, yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. I did want to ask a question of the administration. Um, although the, uh, uh, the information included in the papers tonight does not include the information presented to APLA, um, the APLA information does raise some questions and the declared period mentioned in the papers suggests that the 2020 Superloop Adelaide 500 event uh, between the 20th and the 23rd will require a closure of roads and parklands uh, extending for almost five months. Is that period consistent with last year's shutdown? Because I do recall the state government paid extra money to reduce it to a smaller time span. Through the CEO, um, thank you, Lord Mayor. Through the Mayor, uh, my understanding is it is a reduction in time frame by three weeks. However, the report to committee on the declared period will be through on the 17th of September, and I can make sure that information is included in the report for committee on the 17th. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Look, I, I'd just like to give notice that I will be lodging a motion objecting to the closure between the 2nd of December, that is before Christmas, right through summer, and through most of autumn, uh, because it, it is too long. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you wish to speak to the motion? No. No members? Councillor Hyde? Um, don't, don't forget, we are actually talking to the advice of APLA. This will be coming to committee and council in due course. Yes, yes. No, I, I won't forget. My, my concerns actually echo Councillor Martin's. Welcome you joining me in voting against this. Um, I can't support this length of closure. Um, it's too long a disruption. Uh, for Victoria Park. We, we're actually voting on the advice of APLA as opposed to the length of the closure. But is that not... No, that will come to committee and to council to discuss and debate and vote on. This is, this is the advice from APLA. Okay, thank you. Members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Martin to sum up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Uh, so, item 10 is my report. So, members, it's uh, my pleasure to report on some highlights since the last update to Council. Um, yesterday I met with His Excellency Mr Abdullah al uh, Subuzi, who is the new Ambassador to the United Arab Emirates, and uh, the discussion was around our smart city technology, in particular 10 gig, and highlighting Adelaide's experience and plans in this area. Um, I recently gave the opening address at the Preventing Homelessness Conference, the 12th Australian Livable Cities Conference, and also a welcome to the open of the Main Streets South Australia AGM. Um, it was my pleasure to do the keynote at the 12th Annual South Australian Major Projects Conference about Council's major projects on, underway and the uplift they'll create and also at the Australian Women's Leadership Symposium, uh, which was a symposium held around uh, female leadership, personal growth and development. Um, we hosted a celebration of the first 100 businesses which have signed up to the 10 Gigabit Adelaide Network. Uh, we hosted a cultural think tank session as part of Professor James Pawalski's residency. And we held the launch of the second exhibition of the City of Adelaide's Emergent Curators Program upstairs in the auditorium. Uh, along with many other members, I attended the Grote Business Precinct AGM. And uh, I also held our Lord Mayor's Precinct Forum in the Queen Adelaide Room. The Adelaide Central Market is an icon of our city. And I was recently invited to take part in the opening, uh, official opening of the House of Health Collective, which is a combined store and cafe, which is the outcome of two very long serving marketing market families joining forces to create what is a wonderful organic experience, uh, which is also using all the principles of sustainability. And it was an absolute pleasure to be there. 
Um, I attended the Premier's Olympic luncheon, the state dinner to commemorate 112 years of women's suffrage, which was held here in the town hall, the American Chamber of Co uh, Commerce luncheon, and also Zonta's centennial celebration at Old Parliament House. I visited the University of Adelaide for National Student Volunteers Week to say thank you on behalf of Council for the contribution of more than 3,000 staff and student volunteers to the city, making, particularly making international students welcome. I also had the great opportunity to speak to all our wonderful staff at the depot and here at Perry Street as part of the employee forums. And yesterday, Council celebrated our three libraries and our customer service centre becoming communication access accredited, a significant outcome for our access inclusion panel, making our community services more accessible for people with different communication needs. Um, members, I also will note that today is the anniversary of the birth of Gladys Elphick um, and it was highlighted today, featured on Google. So anybody who went to Google today or to click through to the information on Gladys Elphick, um, and members may remember we opened the Gladys Elphick Park in December last year, which is Park 25, um, in uh, acknowledgement of the great work that she did. And members, You'll recall that last week at committee, we heard from Minta Ellison's special counsel, uh, Sarah Barker, as well as the audit committee chair, David Powell, about the short and longer term imperatives to address how we manage and plan for existing and future changes in climate and weather patterns. Climate related risks, both financial and material, impact how we manage our infrastructure, our economy, and how we ensure that our city remains resilient and livable into the future. The City of Adelaide has an international recognised reputation for leadership in sustainability practices and policy. Through the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors, Australia's capital city leaders have confirmed their commitment to effective and outcome-driven actions. Already the cities of Sydney, Melbourne, Hobart and Brisbane have declared a climate emergency and working with all tiers of government in combating climate change. And as such, I have asked Councillor Sims tonight to present a motion without notice on my behalf to take further action towards preparing for impacts on climate change and I look forward to the Chamber's support. Uh, if I could actually have a member accept that report. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Second to Councillor Sims. Members, uh, those in favour? Those against? Thank you. That is carried. Um, item 11 on the agenda, 11.1, .1, is reports from council members. I look for a mover to accept. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. And a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Uh, Councillor Abraham today, did you wish to speak to the motion? Yeah. Members? Sorry, Councillor Martin. Uh, yeah, look, uh, Lord Mayor, um, uh, for the information of uh, the elected members, I attended the meeting of the Adelaide Airports Advisory Committee on behalf of Council on August 16th, and there were some important matters discussed that um, uh, should be passed on. Um, first of all, as I always like to do, I point out that there were 972 flights uh, that took off or landed at Adelaide Airport during the curfew when no flights had to occur between 11 p.m. and 6 a.m. Uh, many were emergency medical flights and most of them flew over our North Adelaide ratepayers. But uh, in addition to that, uh, there was an important matter raised and it is that aviation authorities are concerned about a new building being planned in the city of Adelaide, which has not been named. Uh, it is to be 60 metres higher than the Westpac building, which is the tallest building in Adelaide, and the regulatory authorities are concerned about the impacts of the structure, particularly of cranes, and have raised their objections with the developer, and that uh, complaint is, as I understand, uh, on foot as we speak. Um, public submissions are also being received, and I understand Council uh, will be asked to approve a City of Adelaide submission at some stage for the Adelaide Airport Master Plan. The plan uh, will consider a range of measures for protecting the airport land, uh, to provide a new runway to operate in parallel to the existing 0523 runway, the main runway, um, to the possibility of renaming the Adelaide Airport. And I know that there are lots of other local government areas that would like to give it another name. Um, and finally, the extension to the airport uh, are on track. Uh, they will begin operating in 2020, and uh, they'll include eight uh, food and beverage outlets, bringing to 21 the total number of 
food and beverage units there, and there will be an additional 10 large retail outlets, um, which is uh, an outstanding achievement on the part of the, uh, the Port Authority and the Lord Mayor. I think we ought to ask them to have a look at Rundle Mall. They could probably help us greatly with that kind of track record of new businesses. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Um, I also would note, members, that there's a correction required in the meeting attendance. Um, I had a CAP in my diary so that I know when the meetings are on, but I'm not a member of CAP, so it was incorrectly recorded. Um, if I can ask... I don't... Sorry, okay. Um, members, is there any comments? Sorry, thank you, Councillor Donovan. Uh, Lord Mayor, I just wanted to bring to attention of our elected members um, a report that was released yesterday by Walking SA around pedestrian safety and traffic crashes in metropolitan Adelaide, which was a review of road traffic crashes involving a pedestrian between 2013 to 2017. And it's a very neat little summary showing that there were 1,427 crashes involving a pedestrian in metropolitan Adelaide. Of those, 289 occurred within the city of Adelaide, so that is 20% occurred within the city of Adelaide. Um, and noting that within the city of Adelaide, our default speed is 50 kilometres per hour, and over 90%, over 90% of the crashes involving a pedestrian took place in speed zones that had a maximum speed limit above 40 kilometres per hour. And that difference between 40 to 50 um, accounted for approximately 40% of crashes. So um, extrapolating from that data, we could make a significant difference in our crash statistics within the City of Adelaide were we to consider reducing our speed and noting that we are in the midst of the integrated transport plan for the next 20 years and our city access strategy with the state government. This seems like good data that we can feed into those both of those documents and policy pieces. Thank you, Councillor Donovan. Members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Abraham today to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, just quickly before I sum up, I just wanted to um, mention that uh, I spoke at the 2019 South Australian Landscape Architecture Awards and, and presented uh, a number of awards, um, but I would like to mention that uh, the City of Adelaide actually took out two awards, one for the North South uh, City Bikeways and the other one was for the uh, activity hub uh, at uh, Pelter Park, Picturella Park 19, so I wanted to congratulate the team. Thank you, Councillor. Members, those in favour to accepting the report, those against, that is carried. Uh, we go to item 12. Um, item 12.1 is the Audit Committee presiding members' annual report, and uh, I invite David Powell to come forward. <coughs> Um, I ordered new glasses today, but I haven't got them yet. So, um, Good evening, Lord Mayor and elected members. Um, I'm certainly pleased to present to you the presiding members report for the City of Adelaide Audit Committee for the year ended 30th of June 2019. Um, we've met six times uh, in the last 12 months and um, that included four ordinary meetings and two special meetings and uh, the attendance um, of, uh, of those of our members um, is recorded in the paper. I probably don't need to go through that. Um, we dealt with a number of substantive issues during the um, period of last year, uh, including reviewing our terms of reference, uh, looking at corporate complaints handling processes. We certainly review um, the uh, processes around internal controls and risk management uh, and how that gets reported in the financial statements. Uh, we hear of reports from the um, Strategic Risk and Internal Audit Group, which is a very effective group. Um, we reviewed the 2018 financial statements uh, and we will be reviewing the 2019 uh, financial statements in our next few meetings. Um, we review the work plan. Uh, we discuss with the external auditors what their scope and order methodology will be for the financial statement audit. Um, there was a review on climate change uh, and you'll note um, the presentation I was involved with only last week too. And we did receive internal audit reports uh, on a number of uh, important areas um, and some of those included 
uh, procurement compliance, uh, employment taxes, child protection frameworks, stakeholder management, uh, community parklands, uh, cyber security, um, confidential information handling, rates revenue, confidential orders, records management, credit card compliance. And you'd be aware that they're all matters that um, are worthy of review. Um, we've had a continuous review of risk management procedures uh, for council and uh, we're involved with reviewing the 2019-20 budget and the revised long-term financial plan, which has gone to public consultation. Um, we also had several presentations during the year from uh, the Business Improvement Group and Value and Efficiency, and that's going to be an um, increasing and emerging focus of this committee as we look at uh, how do we, you know, how can we add value, or how do we, how can we ensure that we are efficient as a council. Um, the committee um, during its deliberations did consider eight matters in confidence uh, and um, I'm satisfied that we applied the appropriate use of the section 1991 requirements. Um, you will recall that I did present to you only last week on climate change and I applaud you for your uh, consideration of it and I, um, I'm sure it will continue to be in a, a very much a significant issue. Uh, for not only this council but for many others and or for all others um, and so thank you for your consideration of it. I'd also like to express my appreciation to the members of the committee for their participation and de their deliberations and also to the management and staff of council for their assistance and clarifications that we received during the year. I'm happy to take any questions if anyone wants to ask me something I'm happy to take one or two or more. We don't, we, no, we don't. <laughs> it's uh, not no, for questions not uh, other than through your presentation. Okay, so, that's fine. But I thank you very much for your presentation. Um, members, uh, thank you, Councillor Martin. I need a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Martin, did you wish to speak no. to it, Councillor Sims? Members, those in favour of accepting those against, that is carried. Thank, thank you. you very much, thank Ms. You. Powell. Members, that takes us to item 12.2, which is the progress of motions by elected members. I look for a mover. I have Councillor Martin seconded by Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Martin. Oh, just a question of the administration. I note that there are a total of uh, 79 motions on or without notice, which have been carried by council. But as of the 20th of August, 78 motions are not acted upon. Can the administration provide advice about how many of those come from the current term of council, the 2014-18 term of council, the 2010-14 uh, term of council and so on? Thank you. I think we'll take that one on notice, Councillor Martin. Oh, Did we fine. get a, can we have an undertaking to that? Um, through the Bizardi member, um, the, if you look at the attachment, there are decision dates so it's a matter of just going through and allocating which decision occurred in which term of council. Um, I can uh, confirm that we have taken um, a thorough review um, of these motions, um, and we have had we do have some long-term outstanding motions which are being progressed as a priority. Um, but I'm happy to share that information with council um, through e-news or email after the meeting. Oh, Lord Mayor, look, that's uh, not necessary. I have great confidence in the administration. So, why the question, Councillor? Oh, interesting. And Deputy Lord Mayor. Members? Councillor Martin to sum up. So, members, that takes us to. Uh, oh. Sorry, members. If that can, I thought we did that. Can I go to the vote? Those in favour? Those against? Thank you. That's accepted. Um, that takes us to item uh, 13.1. Uh, which is a question on notice by Councillor Martin. Councillor Martin. Lord Mayor, I'm happy for the uh, the question as everyone has it uh, to be accepted as is, um, but I'm happy for you to read the replies. Uh, 
Uh, thank you. Uh, the reply is that administration understood the intent of the original motion was a focus on gambling machines, i.e. pokies, in council owned and leased properties. And point two, in developing the policy, administration will work with council members to clarify the intent of gambling style uses. Members, that takes us to 13.2. Councillor Martin, a question on uh, aluminium composite panelling. Happy to take the, uh, the the question as understood, but the reply, um, I would be grateful. Thank you, Councillor. City of Adelaide residential buildings include hotels, motels and apartments, aged care facilities, hospitals, schools, assembly buildings and buildings with occupants who may require assistance to escape have been audited under stage two of the state government aluminium composite panels being building audit. 69 buildings were analysed using the South Australian Life Safety Analysis SALSA, spreadsheet. Uh, no further originality, originally identified residential buildings remain to be analysed. The City of Adelaide Building Fire Safety Committee has commenced stage three and is in the process of reviewing the SALSA rating on all buildings to confirm the inputs, familiarise themselves with the building and apply their collective knowledge to each building and its SALSA results to decide whether remedial action under stage three is required. The committee is still to determine whether any of the build city's buildings require cladding replacement. There are no set dates for the completion of stage three, as it will depend on the level of required remedial action, which is unknown at this time. And point four, where the committee considers phase three mediation is necessary, remediation is necessary, it may act under the Development Act 1993, section 71, to require the preparation of a report and to have work undertaken to make the building's fire safety adequate. Members, that takes us to item 14, questions without notice. Thank you, Councillor Martin. You have a question without notice? Oh, just a couple of follow-up questions, Lord Mayor. In respect of 13.1, impacts of gambling amendment, the administration says it will work with council members to clarify the intent of, quote, gambling style, close quotes, uses. What is the administration's understanding of gambling style uses? CEO. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. If I could ask Ian to please comment. Thank you, Ian. I think it's a fairly broad term, and it's the reason why we work with elected members to get a shared understanding of what that is. Um, uh, can I ask, does the administration understand gambling issues to be betting on horse races? Sorry, through the chair. Um, as I said, I think we'd work through all the all the various issues of what gambling style activity could be. There could be many and varied. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, and uh, I have a further question in regard to combustible cladding. Um, the administration says, unlike the state government, it has um, uh, conducted further tests, stage two tests on 69 buildings um, throughout the city of Adelaide, including, as it observes, hotels, motels, apartments, aged care facilities, hospitals, schools, assembly buildings, and buildings with occupants who may require assistance to escape. But the, uh, the question remains unanswered. How many of those buildings will require stage three replacement of cladding with other building materials? And is there an estimate of the total cost? That's clear in question three. There's no response in the answer. CEO. Um, thank you. Unfortunately, Councillor, you did miss a briefing when you were on leave um, on uh, this item, um, but Shanti's here. Um, perhaps you could provide um, the council member uh, with some further information. Um, through the chair, um, thank you for the question. Um, the answer is we don't know the answer until we've actually completed um, the SALSA stage three analysis. Uh, a further question. I understood uh, from the DIPTI website that stage two was close analysis of the building material and that stage three would be replacement. Does that mean we have not finished stage two according to the DIPTI criteria? Uh, through the chair, uh, that's incorrect. We have completed stage two. 
Um, but in terms of what needs to be replaced, we actually need to do stage three to understand what needs replacing, if any. And is the replacement of such material that might be identified as hazardous stage three or another stage? Through the chair, the answer uh, is unclear at this stage simply because um, replacement of cladding is not the only outcome uh, to achieve uh, compliance. There might be other remediation that could be adopted in a building. So until each building is fully analysed, um, we don't actually know the answer to the question as to whether replacement will or will not be required. Um, there might be other techniques that could be utilised. And look, look, Lord Mayor, I'm not labouring the point, but I do wish to understand, and I'm sure our ratepayers do, do we understand the risk to occupants of hotels, motels, apartments, aged care facilities, hospitals, schools, assembly buildings, and buildings with occupants who may require assistance to escape? Do we understand what the risk is in each of those instances? Through the Lord Mayor, <clears throat> um, the City of Adelaide has uh, an active building fire safety committee. The job of that building fire safety committee is to ensure um, that buildings are safe in the city, uh, regardless of what those buildings are. Um, and until we are notified that a building is unsafe, to the best of our knowledge, those buildings are safe for occupation. Thank you. Uh, thank you, members. That are there any further questions without notice? If not, I will move on to motions on notice. Councillor Moran, 15.1. Thank you. I move as printed that the council investigate the parent parking situation surrounding the Women's and Children's Hospital and possible solutions, including overstay permits, by consulting the hospital and assessing the situation. A and you have a secondary in Councillor Sims. Thank you. Okay. Look, I, I, to my discredit, I did not read the um, report to, the, to my motion, which I'm incredibly disappointed in. Um, there is a problem currently um, with um, parents um, in emergency situations or long-term situations not being able to get access to the car park because I don't know what's happened there. We did rejig it so that the nurses were parking on the street and it would leave that for the parents, um, but um, in the media there have been um, many people ringing up saying that they experienced delays getting into the car park because it was full all the time, even though they'd paid their $38 um, and not getting in there. Uh, the report just seems to reiterate what the current situation is without ex acknowledging that uh, this motion is being moved because there has been a problem. Uh, it's no good to, to say, well, our current situation with that is that we'll waive fines. I can assure you a young mother or young parent on limited means rushing there will take notice of a parking fine because the parking fines are so high and they may then put themselves at extra tr stress trying to drive around and get one. What we need is um, uh, waving is, what's the old saying, putting a uh, mattress at the bottom of the cliff. We need to stop that stress of that parent by stopping them going over the cliff. Um, I read that we are looking at all parking changes um, at some stage, um, it doesn't quite, oh, September. Uh, what's it now, April, September. Um, I don't see how that's in conflict with this, this motion. I'm happy to look at it during that um, time. But I know, being an experienced councillor, that unless I'd brought this up, that wouldn't be looked at. And I, it's annoying to read such a negative report when it's such a, a, an obstructionist report, when it's simply asking to respond to a question to a problem that has been enunciated um, to the area councillor of that area. The current situation needs tweaking. The parents need a bit more help. The car park that we thought would accommodate them all doesn't. Elizabeth DeBars has made that very clear, the head of the midwifery, we need two more, they need two more floors on it. That's not gonna happen, but we need to see how we can, we're not talking about a lot of uh, huge influx, not like the nurses who then took up McKinnon Parade. We're talking about relieving the parents' stress and reassuring them that they should not worry about parking and overstaying if 
there's a situation that necessitates that. Are they there rushing in to drop a sick child off? They've been held up feeding a baby in NICU or SCABU. Um, so I hope you will, so there's nothing in conflict with my motion that can't be addressed at the normal um, time, that, uh, part one says in the report. But I do say that it would not be addressed if this motion wasn't put up. We've got a huge amount of parking problems. This is a specific one, and I'd like that included in what we discuss. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Rand. Councillor Sims? I've reserved my time. Thank you. Members? Yep. Sorry, Councillor Sims. <laughs> Thanks, Lord Mayor. Look, just to uh, add my support to what Councillor Moran is um, seeking to achieve here. Um, indeed, Councillor Moran and I, during my last term on Council, did do a little bit of work on this uh, together because um, we became aware of um, the issues um, at the hospital at that time. Um, and I do think we need to find a solution here. It, it is onerous to ask people to apply for a waiver um, and um, we don't want to do anything that's going to compound people's stress during a, an already very difficult situation. So whilst I appreciate that um, administration are aware of the issues, um, I think it is time for us to find a, a, a solution. So um, I certainly support Councillor Moran's motion as I think it moves us towards doing that. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Councillor Kouros? Yes? Um, I just would like to know, um, I, have a, I had my son 18 years ago at the Winston Children's Hospital as a preemie, so I spent three months at the hospital there, and there were issues with the car park back then. I'm just uh, with finding a car park back then. I'm just wondering if administration have ever done any studies over time, how many car parks are needed to service parents to be able to accommodate the parents to find a car park. Thank you, Sia. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, the, the, the complexity around hospitals is you, you have um, people who work within hospitals who need um, safe and long-term parking. Um, you um, have patients, you have visitors. Um, so there's usually um, a complex parking um, opportunity around each hospital. We treat them case by case. What we've done in particular with, with the Women's and Children's Hospital, because it's a public hospital and it's 24-7, um, is try and free up by working with the Women's and Children's Hospital, the car park adjacent, um, to allow flexibility for parents and visitors, um, and then enable longer term parking on the streets in the area for workers within that area. Um, in response to previous motions from council um, a few years ago, we've also worked with the Women's and Children's Hospital to make the process to get a wave of your expiation much easier. So, um, you know, um, in the past we did require stat decks and we don't do that now. So um, what, what our advice is, is um, perhaps we could capture this motion tonight, but discuss it in the context of the broader parking changes in North Adelaide um, on the 17th of September. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Oh, look, uh, uh, Lord Mayor, just to help the new councillors, including Councillor Kouros, there was a uh, substantial report prepared by the administration for the previous council on the issues related to parking at the Women's and Children's Hospital uh, by uh, some external consultants. The report is about 60 pages long and it identifies all of the traffic movements within that car park number of parks which are at, uh, allocated to nursing staff, the number of parks that are allocated to medical staff, and the expected number of parking spaces and the demand that's anticipated for visitors, including those who have sick children within the hospital. I thoroughly recommend reading that report because it does provide clear information about what the problem is. Councillor Moran's point, uh, and I do understand that the administration is now uh, modifying its approach and not requiring stat decks whenever uh, parking tickets are applied. But I think Councillor Moran's point is exactly uh, to speak against point three in the administration's comment, which is waiving expiation notices is considered a more suitable solution as it is organised after the event. It's Councillor Moran's contention that that should not be the case, that in fact there should be a means of avoiding the, uh, the particular um, antagonism that people feel when they have a sick child in the hospital to walk out and find one of our dirty brake stickers on a windscreen. 
that's the issue and anything that we can do to avoid causing that additional angst would be i think a, a really valuable move ceo did you wish to respond to completely understand um, and on the 17th of September we can certainly discuss this along with all the other feedback that we've been collating since the 1st of July in relation to um, the changes in North Adelaide. Thank you. I think the intention that Councillor Moran has in the motion is quite clear. So, um, Councillor Hyde. Thank you Lord Mayor. I just had a question. Um, was that report that Councillor Martin was referring to, did that factor into the parking changes in North Adelaide that we passed earlier this year. CEO, sorry. Um, yes, yeah, so there was a specific um, recommendation to extend the current approach um, for women's and children's, and that was attached from memory um, to each report that we brought into the chamber on parking in North Adelaide. But were there other recommendations from that report coming out of that report that weren't taken up? Uh, perhaps if we take an undertaking to cir circulate that report yes. ahead of ahead of the committee uh, meeting so that everybody has that a, an opportunity to read it. Thank you. Okay. Um, uh, members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Moran to sum up. Uh, yes. Councillor Moran. Uh, as I tried to point out to Mary, that wasn't the answer to the question she asked. The question that Mary asked was actually, Councillor Kuros asked, was um, a very pertinent question. If we give the hospital permits to give, what I'm anticipating, and I'll suggest at the, um, at the workshop, is that the ward charge nurse of every ward gets, especially the wards where there are parents staying overnight, as uh, Councillor Kuros said with primary babies, they get a certain number of override um, tickets uh, if, if the uh, number of permits in the car park have been sold. This is uh, the devil's in the detail. And, when mother um, says, I want to stay here all night, looking after my very sick baby, here, put it, go and put this on the dashboard of your car and our sticker liquor will not fine you. Because I can tell you, getting one of our humongous fines there, and people don't aren't that interested in the workings of the city council. They don't really look up the website to find out whether there's a waiving policy and, and so forth. That's the sort of thing I'm thinking of. And in answer to that very pertinent question, I would say 20, 25 permits. There are not that many parents that need to overstay to that extent. Um, so you're not looking at hundreds and hundreds. We have solved the nurses' parking. So when we're talking about looking at this in the whole holistic thing, we have solved the women's and children's nursing parking problem. We've got the afternoon nurses out in McKinnon Parade, so the night nurses can park in the, the car park. We put them to the top of the car park so the patients can park at the bottom. We solved all that. So when you say we're going to look at it in a holistic thing, I, I bridle at that because we have, for this hospital, solved most of the problems. But what we haven't solved is the unexpected overstay of a parent. Uh, and the other question that uh, Councillor Hyde said, the parking situation around um, the women's and children's has not changed dramatically with the new parking trial because they, that being in very central, built up North Adelaide, has always had parking restrictions. So this isn't being caused in any great degree by our changes. The streets that changed in North Adelaide were the peripheral, peripheral streets like Mills Terrace, Strangways Terrace, Fields Street, which I don't know why that's there. I think it's because she lives there. But, um, <laughs> Uh, they, uh, so they, they're not round the hospital uh, generally, so that hasn't had a big impact at all on it. Um, and as um, the councillor said, this has been a problem for a long time. And um, I think, personally, I think the permit system, um, I am a parent with a long stay child, a sick child, do not give me a parking ticket, is not a bad idea and I'll be pushing that. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you, councillor. Members put that to the vote. Those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, that takes us to item 15.2, Councillor Sims. Yes, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, I wish to uh, withdraw um, 
this motion. Um, I've had an opportunity to uh, talk to administration um, and um, they've clarified the advice that they've provided in the written comments. In light of that, I'll withdraw it at this meeting, but I will uh, circulate a revised version in time for the next meeting. Um, in particular, I might just foreshadow for the benefit of the meeting, the revised um, motion will look at the findings of the building confidence, improving the effectiveness of compliant and enforcement systems for the building and construction industry across Australia report by Professor Peter Shergold and Ms Bronwyn Weir, in addition to the other points that I've raised. I'll lodge that formally, but I just wanted to flag that with members so they can read up between now and the, uh, the next meeting. <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, members, that takes us to item 15.3, Councillor Hyde. Uh, snap, I, um, in clarifying and reading the comment, I also wish to withdraw this motion um, uh, and uh, just foreshadow that in working with uh, uh, some of our colleagues here, I will be circulating uh, one at a later date um, that takes a more holistic view to transport integration in the city and the state government's approach to that. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Um, that takes us to 15.4, Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I move this motion in the terms that it appears on the agenda and seek a seconder. Thank you, Councillor Kerr. <coughs> Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I think um, this motion has been discussed uh, a lot today, um, but just to, just to add to that, um, Obviously, I would like to highlight, and Section 4 does this in the motion, that we're not here debating the merits of, of sex work or otherwise. I don't think that's our place to do that as a council chamber. Um, what we are here uh, to think about and to talk about and to get a conversation going about um, is how that uh, decriminalisation or legalisation, whatever approach is undertaken by the state parliament, how that affects um, the city of Adelaide, uh, what we do with regards to planning um, and how we regulate businesses in the city. And it seems that um, uh, this is uh, thankfully getting closer and closer to becoming reality in one form or another. And so uh, the, the task then falls to us and it is now more imminent than it's ever been to think about how we implement um, that law. And I think uh, that law will affect the city of Adelaide more than it affects other councils. And that's why um, uh, I've brought this motion today. Um, as it stands, uh, the bill that's been introduced uh, to a degree, I think, shoots from the hip a little bit. It, um, it uh, is saying we're going to decriminalise, we're going to open this up, oh, and local government, here you go, um, here's the Pandora's box, now you uh, sort it out and work out how it's going to happen in practice. Um, uh, that, I think, is a less than ideal scenario for the city, um, uh, and I think uh, we really need to be uh, consultative, or they need to be consultative, and we need to be consulted in how this is going to be implemented. Um, I've out already outlined publicly how this can have an effect um, on the council and on our finances for decisions that come to um, come to cap, which obviously we have no bearing on. Um, but then when those decisions are challenged by objectors, uh, we do have a, a choice about whether or not we fund legal, legal defence of CAP's decision um, when it gets to a court higher than the ERD. So um, that's a very tangible way that it affects us. And of course, when we're making those decisions, um, uh, it could be a lose-lose situation for us. So either we spend hundreds of thousands of dollars defending the decision of CAP, which may have been sound at law, um, uh, or, or we don't, in which case um, we have a number of ratepayers who are upset and feel that we haven't represented them thoroughly. That's just one of many, many um, uh, scenarios that, uh, that could take place. Then, of course, when we're talking about on-street solicitation, you know, it's um, we've got we've got laws that say you can't uh, have a food truck rock up and, and operate on the side of the road, um, but then other businesses uh, such as this will be able to have have open open slather um, uh, in a sense. So, I'm not saying that would be the case, and I don't want to go down the path of fear mongering and saying people are going to solicit out on the schools and that sort of thing because that's just um, patently absurd. I think these people are just trying to do a job, and we all want them to be uh, working in a, in a safe and healthy environment. Um, uh, nevertheless, though, it does concern me that these details haven't been worked through, um, and so I think it's time uh, for that to be addressed, uh, to be led potentially by the City of Adelaide uh, in conjunction with uh, the sponsors and co sponsors of the bill. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Councillor Kerr. I'll reserve my right. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, I'd like to uh, vary that motion if I can, please. Move an amendment. Yes, please. This is a 
I'll give you a moment to read the amendment before you. And I'll seek a seconder. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Kouros. We have that read. Yes, certainly. It says that Council notes the constant. Oh, sorry, Councillor Abrahams, did you, you wish to read it? Uh, yes. Uh, notes the constant trend over many years of cost and responsibility shifting from the. Uh, actually, I'll cut it right down. So, points one and two uh, remain the same. Uh, points. Point three uh, changes. So uh, uh, the amended version is uh, notes the current uh, status uh, amendment six work decriminalisation bill 2019 uh, currently before the House of Assembly. Uh, point four requests council engage with members of parliament, the local government association, and its members, along with other relevant stakeholders, to determine the implications of the bill on councils, particularly a planning implications for local government areas across the state, but particularly in the city of Adelaide, and B, uh, the anticipated uh, prevalence of on-street solici solicitation that the current bill would cause in the city of Adelaide. Okay. Uh, you have a secondary, Councillor Kouros, uh, so yeah. if you wish to speak. Uh, before I speak to this, uh, Lord Mayor, may I want to ask a quick question of administration, please? Yes. Um, are administration able to provide me with a, mm, uh, I guess you know, a number, if, if that is known, of uh, brothels that operate within the city of Adelaide? CEO. I'll ask uh, Shanti, but um, my understanding is there wouldn't be any um, operating currently in the city of Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> so I'll check that. Before we get into the conversation, um, we do have a land use, don't we, Shanti? Adult licensed premises, but I think it's quite prescriptive in terms of what's allowed in mm -hmm. one of those. I haven't actually been to one myself. <laughs> um, through the Lord Mayor, um, under current um, under the current legislative framework, brothels are an illegal land use. Um, there may be illegal land uses that are within the city. Um, we're not aware of any at the moment. Thank you. Um, well, I think Councillor Hyde uh, stole all those words that I was going to talk about right out of my mouth. Uh, but I guess uh, uh, essentially what I want to try and do through this amendment is that the state government will be handing a directive to us. Uh, not necessarily to us, but to, to all the councils. And uh, um, rather than opposing it, and uh, well, I guess you know there's a risk with opposing it, you'll be driving it, uh, you'll be driving this sort of activity underground. But what I wanted to do was uh, encourage those conversations, which uh, Councillor Hyde mentioned, and I thank him for bringing this into the chamber, and uh, really open those communication channels between the local government sector and, uh, and state government. Uh, so really, um, the, the intent of this uh, this amendment is to determine the implications of uh, of such a bill on uh, on council. So uh, um, I really want to get that conversation started and uh, see what we need to do as a local government authority in order to deal with uh, such a bill. Thank you, Councillor Abraham today. Um, Councillor Corals. Thank you. I had Councillor Sims and then Councillor Martin. Thanks, um, Lord Mayor. And look, I don't uh, thank Councillor Hyde for bringing this into the chamber because um, I think the motion is based on a number of false um, assumptions. One of those uh, that remains in uh, this amendment is the reference to the anticipated prevalence of on-street solicitation that the current bill would cause in the City of Adelaide. There's actually no evidence at all, Lord Mayor, to support the assertion that um, decriminalisation of sex work will increase on-street solicitation. In fact, the opposite is true. And in jurisdictions where they have decriminalised sex work, what they have seen is a reduction of uh, business on street because it moves into other uh, premises, legitimate business premises. So to uh, include that in the motion as something that we want to engage with members of parliament around, um, I think gives uh, credibility to a false uh, claim. It's a claim that is often made by opponents of um, sex work reform, but it's certainly not supported by the evidence. So look, I would be open to considering this amendment if Councillor Abrahimsida was uh, to strike that out um, by way of a variation. I'm change a couple of words so that it might 
read, point we might read. Um, Perhaps if it just it just talks to the on-street solicitation of the current possible effects on on-street solicitation or effect. yeah effect on, yeah I think that's fine because that would that would uh, demonstrate that it would um, produce a reduction but I, I don't think we should be okay. um, pushing the, if the I false. could just ask if your seconder is happy to accept that thank you members look I'm happy um, to accept that because I think that demonstrates you know, a recognition that it may affect uh, in terms of having a reduction. And indeed, that's been the experience in other jurisdictions that have brought in um, sex work. And look, just for the record, um, I'm very much supportive um, of uh, reform in this area. Um, I think it does uh, produce happier and healthier communities. It reduces crime. There's a lot of work that's been done on this uh, in New South Wales. Um, and um, in other parts of the world. And I really hope that we can draw on their experiences and be on the side of encouraging this kind of um, bold uh, reform, um, positive social reform that I think changes our community for the better. And um, I'd encourage members to, uh, when dealing with these kind of complex social issues, to take a, an open mind rather than to um, oppose bills outright, as was um, suggested with the original motion. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Uh, Councillor Martin. Oh, thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I, uh, I'll support this amendment. Um, I think it's uh, a much more palatable outcome than the one that proposed that uh, Council opposes the bill. Uh, and uh, moreover, I think that this uh, represents a, uh, a reasonable approach by a local government area seeking to understand the bill. Um, I am uh, dismayed that there is this Barney in Council uh, about whether we oppose or whether we support. It, it is a matter for the State Parliament and the State Parliament has spent two years with a select committee and other inquiries coming to this point. It is the Parliament's job to deal with this, not with Council, notwithstanding the, uh, the concerns about the cost to local government. Um, may I point out, however, that there is already a cost to local government, and this talk about there being no brothels in the city of Adelaide is quite laughable. They are everywhere. Um, I have one just a few doors from where I live. It operates most frequently on Thursday, Friday and Saturday nights. It is a building that is not suitable for use by visiting patrons. I, I believe it is probably a fire trap. There appears to be one entrance in and one entrance out. I am aware of at least another brothel that's operating nearby in North Adelaide uh, and about which neighbours have complained. These are uh, operations that are occurring in our city in broad daylight and they escape any kind of supervision that would ensure health and safety, not only of sex industry workers, but also of the people who go in there. And I think that this proposal by uh, uh, the Parliament, uh, or at least uh, by uh, Tammy Franks, represents an opportunity for this council to ensure that its ratepayers and visitors to this city do remain safe. It is not safe when we regulate even hamburger places and fish and chip shops and tell them exactly what they can and can't do to ensure the safety of their patrons. It is not appropriate for us to somehow say, this is not our responsibility. It is. We know it's going on and we have a responsibility to act. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Members? Councillor Kouros. Uh, so, and I agree with Councillor Martin, the debate for decriminalisation is for the state government um, to debate. However, the amendment brings forward um, a discussion that we can have um, if this uh, reform does go through. So I, I, I congratulate Councillor Adrian Zadeh for bringing the, the amendment through um, and making it clear um, for us to be able to engage with members of parliament in regards um, to the reform if it does get successfully passed. Uh, thank you, Councillor Corus. Members, if not, I go back to Councillor Abridin today to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, uh, in, in summing up, I, I do want to highlight that uh, uh, the, the intent of this uh, amendment is to really determine the, the implications that this is going to have on us and uh, uh, on all other councils, and really this. Uh, 
it, the, the intention there is to to open those communication channels. Um, we can we can go off and do our own thing, and state uh, government can go off and do do their own thing. But I just feel like you know if we do come together, uh, uh, that we can uh, you know resolve any issues that um, uh, you know that, that might be highlighted later on down the track when the when the bill is passed. So uh, I think. Uh, Teamwork uh, divides the task and uh, multiplies the results. So uh, I, I urge members to support this. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor. Members, those in favour of the amendment? Those against? That is carried. That now becomes a substantive. Division. Uh, uh. Councillors, a division has been called on the amendment. Those in favour of the amendment, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Abraham Zadeh, Councillor Martin, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Moran and Councillor Sint. Members, uh, so that becomes a substantive. Is there any further discussion? Um, I'd just like to add that I'm very pleased that this amendment has gone through. I think it gives us a great opportunity to have an open discussion with the members of parliament and also with other members of the local government association, um, as well as perhaps other cities that actually have already been through the decriminalisation so we can actually see what their experience has been. Um, and I thank the members for supporting the, uh, uh, the motion. I go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Um, thank you, Lord Mayor, and uh, just in summing up, I'd like to thank you for your leadership on, on this matter as well, and um, working with myself and Councillor Abraham today to, to see something drafted that is uh, uh, amenable to the vast majority of the Chamber. Um, also as well, when we're talking about on-street solicitation, I just bring to Councillor Sims' attention that in New South Wales, yes, there is on-street solicitation, but there are laws that govern on-street solicitation in New South Wales. The bill before the South Australian Parliament does not talk to laws that govern that, uh, that activity um, uh, in South Australia. So I'd, uh, I'd encourage, encourage Councillor Sims to brush up on that. Um, but of course, the model in New South Wales is something that we can look at um, as well, regardless of whether this, uh, whether this legislation before uh, the House of Assembly passes or not, because um, certainly there are things that we can learn um, uh, from them over there uh, in how they um, uh, go and sniff the sheets. I think it was the, ter was the terminology I read. Um, uh, and so I'd just like to thank uh, members for their anticipated support of this. Um, uh, I think there'll be a good body of work that comes out of this engagement. Um, again, it's an issue that will affect the City of Adelaide more than any other local government area, uh, but it also allows us to pave the way um, for other local government areas and how they um, implement uh, uh, these changes, which will come about sooner or later, um, uh, and how they grapple with that issue. Thank you, members. Those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Thank you, members. That takes us now to item 15.5. Councillor Hyde. Uh, thank you, Lord Mayor. I move this motion in the terms that it appears on the agenda and seek a second. Yeah, uh, Deputy Lord Mayor, thank you. Councillor Hyde. Um, thank you. Um, so this motion is fairly uh, self-explanatory. Um, uh, councillors would know that we actually have no carriage over the uh, what is traditionally uh, the parklands um, where the uh, Botanic Park is um, and obviously where the Lot 14 uh, old RAH site is. Um, and uh, it seems that historically that is uh, the main reason that there is no uh, section of parklands trail. Um, that goes uh, in, in the parklands. And I would stress in the interior, of course, we have that bit of bikeway that we picked up when they um, uh, did the O-Barn, and of course, we don't want to talk about that more. But um, uh, I don't consider that to be parklands trail myself because it's adjacent to road. Um, uh, I use it and it's, it's a fine bike track to get around, um, but I really think it's time for us to have a section of parklands trail um, uh, that, is, that is on the interior. Um, that goes through the middle. I think the redevelopment going on at Lot 14, notwithstanding uh, the issues that we of course have around elm trees um, and that site, uh, does present us the opportunity uh, to uh, to look at actually putting this section of Parklands Trail in place. Um, uh, I note that by the uh, by the Botanic Gardens there, there is a what is now a disused, I guess, service road. Um, that could be reimagined uh, as, a, as a section of the Parkland Trail um, that will connect a Frome Park uh, with Rundle Park um, and uh, go a long way to completing the section of the full figure of eight that, uh, that we want to have in the city of Adelaide and that we want to use as a tourist attraction 
um, uh, for people that come and visit. And of course, uh, with what's going on at Lot 14, um, of course, we all know that we're, Lot 14 is taking South Australia to, to space. It's very exciting, some of the work that's going on there. Um, uh, and so what better uh, uh, place to have um, a tourist attraction in the Parklands Trail um, and to have tourists come through and perhaps do a, an Amsterdam-esque cycle through our uh, world-renowned Parklands uh, and marvel uh, at the magnificent innovation that's occurring there at Lot 14 as well. So I'd commend this motion to the Chamber. Thank you, Councillor Hyde. Deputy Lord Mayor, did you wish to speak? Members? No, if I can actually just comment also, thank you, Councillor Hyde, for bringing this in. I think it would be great to connect also to the linear track and coming in behind the new Adelaide Botanic High School would make perfect sense uh, for the, the cycling traffic through that area. Um, members, if there's no other speakers, I'll go back to Councillor Hyde to sum up. Summed up. Members, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us, members, to item 15.6, Councillor Kouros. Do I take it as well? Yes, we look for a seconder. Councillor Abraham today. Thank you. You may speak to that. Um, thank you for administration for the comments that they provided in regards to my motion and that there is currently some work being done um, regarding water quality of the River Torrance. Um, I just think it's important that we don't lose sight of the importance um, of the health of our River Torrance. Um, we were told, the elected members were told in our last committee meeting of the effects of climate change and the need for it to be considered as an emerge, uh, emerging financial risk. Um, so as a council, we need to ensure that our own assets um, are cared for and the River Torrance is a key focus of the environment in the heart of Adelaide. Um, we can look to other countries like uh, Singapore. Um, they've trialled and errored many, many things and to clean up their river. Um, obviously, it was a much larger task uh, to do, um, but they've improved the conditions immensely. So we can take something from other countries or uh, other cities uh, in how they've done that. Um, it, it would be great. Um, I just want people just to imagine for a moment um, how our city would look with much better improved water quality in our river trials. So I do recall during the election, um, uh, uh, election campaign, Sam Taylor uh, pledged to swim the torrents by 2025. Um, so the community responded uh, really well to this pledge. So uh, as a show of demonstration, I support um, that and I too will jump in the river with them. <laughs> I'll keep you to that. <laughs> Councillor Kouros, uh, Councillor Abraham today, would you like to speak to uh, us? Okay, members? If not, I'll go back to Councillor Kouros to sum up. I will take it that uh, this is a good support. So uh, the, the River Torrance is the, um, you know, the, the spine of our city and uh, we need to think long term and if we are promoting our city to be designed for life, I would like to think that the River Torrance is uh, a part of that. Thank you, members. To the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. That takes us, members, to item 15.7. Uh, Councillor Abraham, today. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, move the motion as printed, and I seek a second. Uh, thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Um, Lord Mayor, uh, this uh, motion has been largely uh, driven uh, by, by yourself, you've been a, a, a big supporter of, uh, uh, of this motion. Um, uh, before I, I speak to it, may I ask a, a quick question, please? Certainly. Um, the question is about uh, the, um, the organic waste. Um, at the moment, is it just residents that get a, an organic bin or uh, do businesses get it as well? See, we might have to take that one on. Oh no, I actually have Michelle. Thank you. Um, yeah, so my gut instinct that it's only residents is correct, but Michelle is here if you've got any further questions. So, that is correct? That's correct. Thank yep. you. Okay. Um, Lord Mayor, I know that a, a similar um, motion has been um, 
uh, a similar initiative has been uh, uh, undertaken in Victoria, at one of the councils there in Victoria. Uh, and so if they've done it, and if they can do it, then why can't we do it here in Adelaide? Um, uh, this will be a, a, a very simple um, uh, like exercise where you can uh, reach out to the residents and the rent payers with uh, everything that's been happening in the um, uh, in this space in terms of the uh, solid waste levy, uh, um, in, in terms of uh, um, I guess our rubbish not being accepted by countries overseas. Our rubbish is seen to be uh, our responsibility, and we should be uh, dealing with it rightfully so. Um, uh, something like this might really get our residents and ratepayers to, to think about their uh, waste management, their recycling. Um, so uh, I know that I know that the uh, administration are uh, uh, going through a, a, a waste management strategy at the moment. Actually, I've, I've got a question in relation to that. So uh, I don't know whether I'll get an answer to this at this stage, but uh, uh, as part of that waste management strategy, are we looking at uh, possibly providing the, uh, the organic bin to, to businesses? Is that something that might be considered? Yeah. Is that something that can be shared at this stage? Uh, through the Lord Mayor. So as part of that strategy, we are, we are looking at all of our services and, and we will bring um, that back to council for council to make a decision on and, and certainly um, you know, uh, all three streams are what we're looking at. Uh, well, um, I, I guess Lord Mayor, I just wanted to highlight that uh, uh, this, this motion does um, uh, that does talk to our, uh, our very uh, sort of, uh, base activity, which is uh, which is rubbish. We're uh, we're here to uh, deal with roads, roads, and, and rubbish, and so uh, that's what we're doing here right now. And uh, I look forward to the debate and urge the members for their support. Thank you. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Did you wish to speak, right. Councillor Donovan? I did see your hand before. I'm sorry. Did you I wish to speak? Anyway. Okay, members. Thank you, Councillor Sims. Thanks, Lord Mayor. Uh, look, I um, want to uh, thank Councillor Abrahamsida for putting this forward. Um, it's no surprise to members that I, I share his passion for um, recycling. Um, and uh, indeed, I've had um, discussions myself with um, administration about what we can do to uh, try and advance that in the city. So I think this is a, a great initiative and, and something we should definitely look at. Um, as uh, Councillor Abrahamsida has said, there is a need to address the other um, issues uh, that affect our um, recycling practices. I was disturbed uh, to learn that um, there is um, elements of our waste that are ending up um, being dumped in Victoria. Um, and I think that is concerning. We need to look at what we can do to uh, use our waste um, effectively. Um, and um, I know this council has done some good work in terms of recycling material being put back into bitumen. Um, and uh, that's a great uh, way to use um, recycled waste locally. But also I think we need to look at the behavioural change um, element and um, anything that encourages residents to think about their waste, to change their um, behaviour and, and more importantly, rewards those that um, are uh, emulating appropriate practice, um, I think is worth us looking at. So I'm um, very pleased to support this and I look forward to the, the broader body of work um, coming through as well from administration. Uh, thank you, members. To Councillor Martin and then Councillor Hyde. Yeah, look, Lord Mayor. Um, look, I don't, I don't mean this as a criticism, and I, I mean it to stimulate uh, discussion and conversation. But look, we, we have already got a, a motion on record that's asking the administration to explore waste management issues. We've had countless workshops and all of those issues, including incentives uh, and additional services to uh, residents and businesses have been discussed. And we talked earlier about Parklands trails and writing a letter to the minister and um, uh, discrimination uh, or at least decriminalisation of uh, the, the sex worker industry. Writing. Are we talking uh, to the motion, yes, Councillor Martin? Are I'm we? just asking. Um, 
could could we just have something other than asking the administration to provide a report or a response to something we've already asked them to do? Um, well, Councillor Martin, I actually might respond to that because we haven't asked them to do this. And this is actually something that um, in discussions with Councillor Abraham today and also with administration is to see where we can actually look at rebates to encourage behaviour change, as Councillor Sims was just mentioning, and to uh, see it was already been already trialled successfully in other council areas interstate to see where we can look at that and in addition to our waste systems. And I thank you Lord Mayor for reminding me that that was one of the matters that we discussed during the term of the last council that the administration is investigating rebates that encourage people to put less in their bins and we also had very broad discussions about practices in other parts of the world including New York where uh, uh, landfill waste is weighed and penalties are applied to those who add too much waste and uh, rebates are applied to people who apply less. The point is we, we have traversed this ground very thoroughly and it would be nice to have a motion that doesn't reflect on something we've always asked. Um, uh, I just ask that we look to some new and fresh innovative new ideas and I would welcome that. That would be a great thing for this council. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Councillor Hyde. Lord Mayor, just a quick question. Um, would it be possible for administration uh, in this uh, investigation to contemplate whether these replacement bins could be cleared? Uh, CEO, we already have a motion asking us to do that, Councillor. Thank you. Members, if not, I think in the same way, actually, that Councillor Moran had asked specifically for that to be investigated as a, an exercise that's coming through to council. This is a similar motion to ask for a specific investigation, and uh, I will thank Councillor Abraham Zedo for bringing it into the chamber. Um, Councillor Abraham Zedo, to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Uh, just very quickly, um, uh, when, it, when it comes to uh, when it comes to these sort of uh, uh, in initiatives, I know that we always have a carrot and stick approach. We've seen the, uh, the state government bring in uh, their solid waste level, which has been steep, but I guess here we are as a local government authority providing the carrot, which is the rebate for uh, our residents and, uh, and ratepayers. So hopefully that will change some behaviour, as, as Councillor Sims uh, mentioned, uh, and uh, uh, hopefully that will uh, lead to um, to us uh, better understanding our waste, better understanding what can be recycled, what can go uh, in an organic bin. Uh, it's one of the areas that I'm uh, passionate about uh, is circular economy, what can be reused and uh, uh, you don't necessarily have to go out and, and you know, buy something new, you can, you can reuse a particular thing rather than throwing it in the bin, adding motion. Well, if promotions <laughs> provide rebates and if promotions provide a check for our residents and red players, I think that's worthwhile discussing. So, thank you. Beautiful, thank you. Um, members, to the vote. Those in favour? Those against? Thank you, that's carried. Members, that takes us to item 16, motions without notice. I have Deputy Lord Mayor and then Councillor Sims. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'd like to uh, move a motion without notice uh, pertaining to the passing away of Anthony Williamson. Uh, that council expresses its deep sadness at the passing of Anthony John Williamson, City of Adelaide South Ward Councillor between 2010-2014, local Hutt Street business owner for more than 30 years, an active Adelaide City East community member and volunteer. And, record, and records its appreciation of Tony's distinguished service to the City of Adelaide community and passes on their condolences to Tony's wife, Sandra, daughters Sally and Anna, and their families, and notes the Lord Mayor will be attending Tony's funeral at St John's Anglican Church on Halifax Street on Wednesday the 28th of August 2019 and will convey on behalf of Council our sincere sympathy to the family. And I'll see you in a second. Uh, thank you, Councillor Sims. Um, Councillors, I've had the uh, great honour and pleasure to serve with Councillor Williamson uh, in my first term of council in 2010 and 2014. And I remember it was probably the first faces I met when I walked out um, of the counting room with the announcement of the results. And he looks at me and he goes, do you know what you got yourself into? And uh, we had a big smile on his face, tall man talks with his hands. Um, and I said, oh, I'm not quite sure. I said, are you in? He goes, yes. I said, he goes, are you in? I said, yes. He goes, you wait and see, my friend. You wait and see. And here we are, um, you know, nine years later, I'm in this role. I've had the pleasure of serving with him for four years. And I've got to tell you, 
Um, looking across the chamber, not that there were many smiling faces around me now, but he was the sort of guy you look for in the chamber when things are starting to get a bit dark. And no matter how dark it got, there was a smile on his face. He took it very light. No matter how hard it got, um, he was there ready to fight for the community and be involved. Even after council, um, he was extremely passionate and very supportive of his Hutt Street precinct as his home, uh, and especially Halifax uh, Street, especially where his practice is. Um, it, I've got to say he's left a remarkable um, impression on me as a gentleman. I've had constant interactions with him over the last nine years, and he will definitely be missed. Uh, may he rest in peace, um, and may God have mercy on all our souls. Thank you, members. Thank you. Uh, Councillor Sims, did you wish to speak? Thank you, uh, Lord Mayor. Um, just to uh, echo um, the Deputy Lord Mayor's uh, comments about um, Tony Williamson, I didn't um, have the privilege of working uh, with Tony on council, but I, I met him um, in lead up to the 2014 council election. Um, he very generously met with me a few times for a coffee um, and to share his experiences having served on the, the council during that term. Um, and uh, my experiences with him is that uh, have always been that he's a good, uh, was a good and decent um, man and someone who had a, a strong desire to contribute to the community. Um, I know his daughter Anna well, um, and um, my thoughts are certainly with uh, his family at this time. Um, I know this um, must be a very difficult period for them, and um, I know that uh, all of us are thinking of them and, um, and wishing them well. Thank you, Councillor Sims. I think Tony will be remembered very much as a funny and kind man. Um, he also had an interesting use of language and uh, those of us that were on council with him or worked for him on council uh, had many laughs um, at his turn of phrase, shall we say. Um, and he was also uh, very passionate about his community and, um, and I'm uh, passed on our sincere sympathies to the family tomorrow. I think Councillor Sims and Deputy Lord Mayor are joining me at the funeral. Um, thank you, members. If there's anyone else, would you like to speak to the motion? And if not, uh, members, oh, Deputy Lord Mayor to sum up. Oh. Members, those in favour, those against, thank you. That is carried. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I'll uh, read out the motion. I move that the Council acknowledges the City of Adelaide's long-standing commitment to managing and reducing the greenhouse gas, gas emissions of the City of Adelaide and the community. Request that the City of Adelaide consider and address climate change risks in its own operations and service delivery with a report on progress and implementation to be provided to the City of Adelaide Audit Committee for its review and assurance to Council declares that climate change poses a serious risk to the people of Adelaide and it should be treated as a national emergency. Four, request that the Lord Mayor advocates to other tiers of government through the Capital City Committee and the Council of Capital City Lord Mayors that urgent action is taken to understand, disclose and manage risks related to climate change. Thank you. And I'll seek a seconder. Thank you, Deputy Lord Mayor. Councillor Sims. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I want to start by thanking you for the leadership that you've shown on this issue. I know that you're someone who is passionate about climate change and the effects that it has on our city. And uh, I think this motion tonight very much cements Adelaide's place as a leader in climate change action. It's an approach that's been taken under many Lord Mayors in our city. Lord Mayor Yarwood was a strong advocate in the climate change space, as was Lord Mayor Hazy, and this is continuing under your leadership, so I thank you for that and uh, it's an honour to move this motion on your behalf. We heard just last week at committee about the impacts that will flow from climate change to our city. We know that it has the potential to affect our property values and our insurance premiums. We also know that this will have a huge impact on livability in our city. We have a responsibility to our residents and our ratepayers to take action and to advocate for other levels of government to step up and do the same. Lord Mayor, climate change is an emergency and we need all elements of government to take immediate action. Over the last six months, we've seen councils and parliaments across the globe pass similar resolutions to those that we're debating tonight. In April 2019, the UK Parliament became the first parliament in the world 
to declare a climate emergency. And in May, the Australian Capital Territory became the first parliament in Australia to declare a climate emergency. More than 500 local councils around the world have passed motions declaring climate emergency, including the city of Hobart, the city of Sydney, the city of Melbourne, the city of Darwin, Adelaide Hills Council, Gawler Town Council, Lyme Regional Council, and Adelaide's own sister city of, Ch of Christchurch. And tonight it is my hope that we will join them in making a similar declaration. I commend the motion. Thank you, Councillor Sims, Deputy Lord Mayor. Good Members? If not, I thank Councillor, oh, sorry, Councillor Kerra. Oh, well, thanks, Lord Mayor. Um, look, uh, I am compelled to speak about this um, because there are some troubling elements to this. Um, firstly, there's two things that are troubling, but, but firstly, uh, this has come about as a motion uh, without notice. Um, and uh, there is no time sensitivity to this. Two weeks uh, would have caused no harm whatsoever. Um, it is a bit worrying that this is being put forward uh, without the um, uh, without the basic courtesy to um, without the courtesy to members to be given a period of time to at least consider this, uh, which is normally the case with a motion on notice. So, um, given that there was a preamble by yourself, Lord Mayor, uh, about this, with all respect, uh, it looks, uh, for all intents and purposes. Uh, because this has already come to the chamber declaring an emergency, we have all discussed and debated that. Uh, it looks like we are being asked to uh, wave something through, uh, and it looks like it's it's almost a bit of a setup. And I and and so that that is the first concern that I have about this. The second concern uh, is that well. Once again, we, we're being asked to, we, we have to sort of go back over all the grounds that we discussed when we first uh, debated this and decided not to proceed. Um, just one of those concerns, and, and uh, you know, it is a reiteration, but I, I urge members to consider this. Um, we, we are all concerned about climate change. We are all passionate about climate change. I'm concerned and I'm passionate about climate change. I'm worried about the effects as much as anyone else. But the problem uh, with this type of thing, the problem is you've got a piece of activism here declaring an emergency. And the problem is, the problem is, Lord Mayor, our ratepayers don't want this from us. They delegate this to state and particularly federal governments. They delegate this to federal governments. And those of us, I say, Lord Mayor, those of us in the room who may be thinking, this is really awesome, right on, yeah, this will be really cool, you know, I'm gonna get the feel goods, we're saving the planet. Think it through. If you do engage in activism that locals, that ratepayers do not want, what happens is that they get resentful and they get resentful about this very issue. They will then vote against this issue in state and federal uh, government. Speak to them, speak to ordinary folks. This is the reason they come out and shake their head when local governments uh, indulge in matters that are way beyond their purview and that amount to activism. So think it through, Lord Mayor, this actually damages the cause. This is the type of thing that leads to state and federal policy uh, uh, governments, uh, parties that oppose climate change getting elected. It is this sort of behaviour. That is my concern. I say to members, don't, be, uh, don't feel pressured. Don't feel rushed by this. We, we had a debate about this before. Don't feel pressured by this tactic. And worst of all, if I could have 15 seconds. <laughs> Yes. yes, you've got 15 seconds. Okay. Um, do not support the precedent of a motion uh, coming through and then a motion being uh, put forward uh, by the back door, being put forward as a motion without notice, uh, as a kind of stitch up. This should be a motion on notice. We should have the time to, to debate this. Do not support this because that is a bad precedent to set. We should not be allowing uh, a stitch up uh, in this way to take place. and. Uh, <laughs> Thank you, Councillor Kerry. Councillor Hyde. Thank you, Lord Mayor. I do have some sympathies with um, uh, what Councillor Kerry is saying. However, um, I would outline that uh, three uh, declares that climate change poses a serious risk to the people of Adelaide. That's what we're declaring here. Um, we're saying it should be treated as a national emergency. We're not declaring a climate emergency. And that, that's, that's the reality here. We are not declaring a climate emergency here. We're saying it should be treated as a national emergency. And of course, we're saying it should be treated as a national emergency by a level of government that is higher than us. 
Um, and of course, the reason are we supporting this motion as opposed to the previous uh, pure advocacy motion that came to the chamber before it, because it doesn't have that unnecessarily uh, emotive and useless declaration. Uh, but what it does have um, uh, is, a, is a, a teeth. It has teeth, this motion does, and it, and it allows the Lord Mayor to take this um, uh, uh, to the August uh, uh, Capital City uh, Lord Mayor's Committee um, uh, and, uh, and discuss this um, yeah, in some depth about how we coordinate with other cities um, to address the risks that are, of course, in the briefing that we got. Um, that's what this motion seeks to do. Um, uh, that's why I'll be supporting it. And of course, um, uh, I encourage other members to support it because we were briefed on the very serious effects um, that climate change will have um, not that long ago. And that's, of course, still fresh in my mind. Um, so this motion is a good motion. And I thank the Lord Mayor for bringing it uh, to the chamber. Thank you, Councillor Martin, and then Councillor Moran. Uh, thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, and uh, thank you also to Councillor Kira, who's become the uh, the climate change curmudgeon of council. Um, it, it is it, it is uh, it is wonderful to hear him speak on the subject. Um, look, uh, Councillor Kira, what has changed is that the Lord Mayor has changed her mind, and so has the team, and we can be grateful for that because uh, six months ago um, this Councilor, was put forward. Councillor Martin, sorry, I. I point of order in terms of the Lord Mayor has changed her mind. I think that's a little bit out of order. Well, you've changed the team's mind. Good on no, you. No, I haven't changed anybody's mind. Thank you, Councillor Martin. Well, Are you talking okay. to the motion? Yes, I am, Lord Mayor. I was attempting to. Um, look, I, I just wanted to say I, I'm delighted that this has been uh, placed before us again. Uh, my only regret is that it wasn't adopted in March. But uh, to put uh, Councillor Kira's mind at rest, um, we now join uh, in the intervening period since March, the Adelaide Hills Council, the Ballarat City Council, the Basco Shire Council, Bellingham Shire Council, Blue Mountain City Council, Brimbank City Council, Bunbury City Council, Byron Shire Council. I've only got to the bees, um, but I can keep going. The list is endless. And moreover, um, I understand now that there are some 967 jurisdictions in 18 countries who declared a climate emergency. And the populations covered by these declarations of climate uh, emergency uh, amounts to about 212 million people. And in New Zealand, in backward New Zealand, 74% of the country is covered by climate emergency declarations. Well, Lord Mayor, we do regard uh, New Zealand as being... I'm sorry, Councillor, I don't regard New Zealand as being backward at all. Oh, well, I'm sorry to hear that. Um, anyway, look, the point, the point is... Well, I can tell you a few New Zealand right. points if you like. Um, uh, Lord Mayor, the point is that everywhere around the world, including New Zealand, is showing the way for the city of Adelaide. Uh, I, I ask... Councillor Kira to consider that we will be joining uh, a fairly esteemed bunch of countries, uh, states and councils, not to mention 212 million people around the world who similarly are concerned about climate change. A and I would ask him to change his mind. I know that he is capable of doing that um, and I I'd appreciate his support of this motion. Thank you. Councillor Moran. Uh, yes, Lord Mayor. Um, I'm glad you brought this back to the Chamber. Um, I was very um, upset that we didn't um, declare a climate change emergency when we had a full gallery. We had a, a wonderful young man who um, wept bitter tears after we turned him to, turned, didn't court, declare a climate change emergency. I was really disappointed. Um, I know that um, declaring it is a statement rather than an action. However, I thought we really let the side down there. So I'm really glad that the Lord Mayor has brought back. I, we are unaware of, uh, I assume that you always would have um, wanted to declare that. And I was disappointed the majority of council didn't say that. But let's not make any bones about it. This is the same motion that Robert Sims moved before. Number three declares that climate change poses a serious risk to the people of Adelaide and should be treated as a national emergency. This is a climate change emergency. So let's not play semantics and say, oh, it's not quite the same. It's a bit different. I can accept this. That's just merely mouth stuff. And I, I think that's not worthy of the councillor that said that. As for Councillor Carer, well, I don't think that comes as any surprise. 
really his views have been made very clear um, on this um, subject. Um, I think that perhaps the um, briefing we had the other day might have shaken a bit of cobwebs off this council. It should have, it was very, it was very interesting and very good. Um, but this is a climate change emergency motion and I'm so glad that we finally moved that. It was an extreme embarrassment that we turned it down last time. I just couldn't believe it. And obviously the Lord Mayor couldn't believe it either. So she's asked Rob, Rob to move, uh, Council seems to move the same motion he moved before. Uh, and also to say that we're waving this through and that it's offensive. I really think, Lord Mayor, that you should take that up with the councillor afterwards, after you, oh, you were the person that asked this motion to be. And um, we talk about a lot about respect in this council. And I think that the, your position as the Lord Mayor was shown very little respect by Councillor Carer. I've never heard such a um, personal attack on Lord Mayor in my time in the chamber. And I think you are open <laughs> Councillors, councillors, councillors. On the Lord Mayor, the only person in this chamber that deserves respect, apart from uh, uh, any actions because of the position. And I was very surprised that that was said to you today, uh, Council, uh, Lord Mayor, and I'd apologise for the council for having to listen to that. <laughs> Members, if not, I'll go back to Councillor Sims to sum up. Thank you, Lord Mayor. Um, look, in uh, response to some of the concerns that have been raised around this uh, coming up um, within short notice, uh, this has been discussed previously, as has been identified um, during the debate. It's not a new topic. We heard a, a briefing from um, Council uh, last week through committee, so I don't think councillors need to be concerned about this setting any precedent. Um, Councillor Kerra. The, the, councillors, the other, please. Councillor Sims is speaking. The other point I just want to draw members' attention to in terms of uh, the wording of the motion, this is very similar to um, the approach taken by the City of Sydney um, and certainly uh, positions us um, in, uh, in that context in terms of uh, working with other um, capital city uh, councils to, uh, to pass similar motions. And um, again, I, I want to thank you, uh, Lord Mayor, for bringing this forward again. And um, I really encourage all members to get behind this. Um, I think this would be a, a great outcome for our city and um, provide a, a good avenue to advance the issues that are flagged within the motion. And thank you, Councillor Sims. Members to the vote, those in favour? Those against? That is carried. Councillors, the division has been called on the motion. Those in favour of the motion, please rise and remain standing until all names have been called. Councillor Donovan, Councillor Abraham today, Councillor Martin, Councillor Ho, Deputy Lord Mayor, Councillor Hyde, Councillor Kuros, Councillor Moran, Councillor Sims. Members, uh, the final uh, on the, uh, sorry, item 17, it's not quite the final, is the exclusion of public councillors. There's one item to be presented tonight uh, with the request for consideration and confidence. The item requires a motion and decision to order the exclusion of the public to enable consideration and confidence. Could I have a mover and a seconder for a motion to order the exclusion for item 18.1.1? Thank you, Councillor Ho, and a seconder, Councillor Moran. Uh, members, any discussion? If not, Councillor Ho, summed up. Members, to vote those in favour, those against, that is carried. Uh, members of the gallery and staff, um, thank you for your attendance at this meeting. Those not associated with items, can you please now leave the chamber while council considers the
Our members, thank you. I declare the meeting closed.